One way law enforcement works to protect and serve is by getting guns out of the hands of criminals. But we've discovered that each year thousands of guns once carried by officers, they're actually turning up at crime scenes around the country. CBS News partnered with nonprofit newsrooms The Trace and Reveal to survey more than 200 police departments across the country. And most of those departments told us they sell or trade their used guns. Here's national investigative correspondent Stephen Stock. You know, another family lost another child at the hands of a firearm that shouldn't even be on the streets. It shouldn't even be on the streets. Candace Leslie's only child died three years ago, shot four times outside his apartment. We desensitized to just another black child being murdered. Yeah, it's just common. From the scene, detectives gathered a gun involved in Cameron's death, but police have made no arrest. I'm losing trust in the people who are supposed to protect and serve us. But what Candace didn't know until we told her was that a weapon involved in her son's death here in Indianapolis was a former police weapon from a sheriff's office more than 2,300 miles away. Using public records, CBS News traced a gun involved in Brown's death, a Glock 21 handgun, to a sheriff's office in Stanislaus County, California. There's no reason for police firearms to be in the hands of teenagers. I would say to Cameron's mom, I'm very sorry for your loss, uh, but my organization had nothing to do with it. Stanislaus County Sheriff Jeff Dirksy told CBS News Los Angeles he makes no apologies that his department sells its used service weapons. Whoever did this, if he didn't acquire that gun, he's probably going to go acquire another one. Dirksy says he saved taxpayers $25,000 last time he traded in about 650 guns. The department updates its arsenal every seven to ten years. I mean, it's a legal transaction. I mean, I'll go back to what would it, so if I legally sold my u old used patrol cars and somebody uses that in the commission of a crime, is that our responsibility? Uh, I would say no. His department is one of more than 140 law enforcement agencies nationwide we found offloading their used weapons to gun stores. So this is about 220 Smith & Wesson M&P 40 Cs that just came in as police trade-ins. And those stores advertise the gun's police history as a selling point. So what you end up with are quality firearms in really good condition. During a 16-year time period ending in February 2022, the ATF traced 52,529 former police service weapons to crime somewhere in America. On average, that's more than 3,200 guns every year, nine every day. It's good to know that these things aren't gonna end up someplace they shouldn't. This is what Seattle's police department does with its used guns. We recently watched as they melted 179 used service weapons. Seattle changed its policy in 2016. It's not worth that risk. What's the worst thing in your mind that could happen if a police gun got in the wrong hands? Well, if you'd be used in, in a criminal act and a shooting, a, killing somebody, or even killing an officer. As a police chief, I, I, I don't want anything, any weapon that we owned to end up being used uh, violently against another, another person uh, in, our, in our country. The Indianapolis police chief overseeing the investigation of Cameron Brown's shooting told us his department does trade in its guns. You'd be open to stopping that practice. Well, I'd have to see, you know, this, this is the taxpayers pay for these things. Does it feel like Cameron's just a statistic? I think it may feel like just a statistic to those handling his case, but to me, no. I feel that number all the way in my heart. He's your boy. Yep. And he's gone too soon. Well, the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives told CBS News that this practice of trading and selling old police weapons is legal and that Congress would have to change the law.